happens is actually the transmission of character from parents to offspring. Okay, that lead to heredity and variation. Heredity means the similarity between offspring and their parents, while variation is difference. So why offspring is different from the parents and why there is similarity with their parents? Okay, because of inheritance, because offspring receive certain character from their parents and that character transfer on the form of genes from parents to offspring. So we will discuss about these things in detail. Okay, that how this character transfer, what is the reason of variation? All these things we have to discuss that in this chapter in detail. But to go into inheritance and detail, I just want to review a little bit about reproduction Okay, so that it will help us understanding the inheritance topic better. We have two, there are two types of reproduction. One is sexual reproduction, another is asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction in which two gametes fuse to create a new offspring that are genetically different to the parents, right? So sexual reproduction is the type of reproduction in which two sex cells are involved. One sperm, another ova. Both will fuse and they will form offspring, but offspring will not genetically similar with their parents. That will be genetically different because two different gametes are coming from two different individuals and they are fused, right? So this is called sexual reproduction. Now, asexual reproduction without the fusion of two gametes, it involves only one parent and produce offspring that are genetically identical to the parents. Mean that produce new individual and that are genetically identical. Why? Because only one parent involved. Here is no gametes formation. Gametes is not coming from two different organisms. Second, here is no process of meiosis involved. Here process of mitosis are involved. Because of this reason, the individual or the offspring that produce that will be genetically identical. Genetically identical means that will be similar to their parents. Okay, all right. Now, let's me discuss with you the basic terminology that we are using. Okay, the first one is fertilization. So what is fertilization? A male and female gametes fuse to form zygote. Male and female gametes within human from male sperm while from female ova. These both will fuse and they will form a unit like a one cell and that is called what zygote. Fertilization is actually the fusion of male and female gametes. Gametes is actually sex cell. Sex cell are the cell that having ha applied number of chromosome. Applied number of chromosome means that contain one set of chromosome. And human, that is 23 number of chromosomes. So, one haploid cell will come from male, another haploid cell will come from female. Both will fuse and they will form zygote. Okay? This process, the process of fusion, that is called fertilization. Is it clear? So I think the definition of zygote is clear right now. A cell that is a cell that is formed is a result of fertilization. And later on, like when the two male and female gamete fuse, after that they will start a, pro a cell division to form identical cell. And that cell division is actually mitosis. Okay, 
and they will form a mass of cell that is called what zygote. Uh, that is called sorry, that is called embryo. Now, embryo is actually an organism in its early states of development, especially before it reach a distinctly recognizable form, like before it reach that, like initially, still not developed uh, legs, uh, eye, and different part of like you cannot. Uh, recognize different parts of the body. So up to that time, it is called what embryo. Later on, it become fetus when all the, uh, you know, when all the uh, parts develop and you can recognize that, then it become fetus, right? All right. Now, how the process of fertilization happen and how is I good form? Uh, we have, you can see here, we have that this is female and this is some, uh, this is sorry, this is male. And female egg cell will develop by the process of meiosis. Remember, you know, like in this female body and ovary, the process of meiosis take place and it produce what it produce. Here you can see here. Uh, in this in this place, the process of meiosis already took place. Meiosis, right? So, is 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 a result of that process of meiosis. So, what they produce, they produce egg cell. You know, like initially an ovary, there is specialized cell that having forty six number of chromosomes. That specialized cell will convert into egg cell or ova. Okay, so it means 23 number of chromosome you get. And that cell is called egg cell. While in male testes, also that specialized cell that having 46 number of chromosome that is in testes, that will convert into sperm cell. And that sperm having 23 number of chromosome. Both, well, egg cell and sperm cell both will fuse and the follicular tube of female and that will form a cell that is called zygote. The fusion is called fertilization while the zygote will start mitotic division. Mitotic division means mitosis. Like this cell having 46 number of chromosomes. So those 46 number of chromosomes, uh, this 46 chromosome containing cell will start to divide by the process of mitosis and it will produce two cells and both cell having 46 number of chromosome. Okay, uh, this having also 46 number of chromosome and this having also 46 number of chromosome. You can see here the zygote having 46 number of chromosome. So zygote divide by the process of mitosis and the form two cell and both having 46 number of chromosome. Again, in these two cell process of mitosis will happen. They will make eight cell, they, they will make four cell and then four will convert into eight cell and all the cell containing same number of chromosome means 46 number of chromosome. That's embryo well form. Is it clear? So here, if you see why the mitosis is happening, so that it uh, keep the chromosome number constant. And here, if you see, the when egg or sperm are developing at that time, this chromosome should be converted into 23, right? Why it should be converted into 23? So that it again uh, get 46 number. If it is not converting into 23, and for example, 46 is coming from female and 46 coming from male, so that will become double, right? So it will again and again duplication of chromosome will happen again and again duplication of so to avoid that duplication from generation to generation right so to avoid that duplication from generation to generation for that reason the process of meiosis is happening and you got 23 number of chromosome okay and then 23 and 23 max again it give us 40. I think this point is clear doubling of chromosome means if it is not converting to haploid if within this female, 
the cells is not converting into haploid or in this male it is not converting into 23 so it means male will give for 20 for 46 and female will give for 46 and that will lead to 92 and again in another process again it will give one partner will give 92 another will give 92 so again will fuse so the chromosome will become double from generation to generation so to avoid this thing the process of meiosis should happen in male to give you 23 number of chromosome to uh, give you 40, uh, it means applied number of chromosome. I think it is clear. Now, Uh, let's move to world, you know, like uh, how, what is the process of mitosis and what is meiosis? You know, mitosis actually produce an exact copy of cell that having same number of chromosomes. The significance of mitosis is it occur and, re and repair, like uh, when your body parts are going to be repaired. So for that mitosis happen, it's also play important role and growth. Your body is growing. So in that, uh, new new cells are forming is a result of mitosis, right? Uh, and another asexual reproduction also involve the process of mitosis that form uh, genetically identical cells. While meiosis lead to for meiosis happen in testes and ovary, and that lead to the formation of six cell, right? And I discussed you already that in male sperm will form, while in female uh, ova will form. Is it clear? And when these both cell uh, mix, right, when both uh, fuse with each other, so you will get, again, the somatic cell, you will get somatic cell containing 46 number of chromosome. Okay? Now, uh, question is, what are homologous chromosome? Okay. Uh, different organism having different number of chromosome human having 46 number of chromosome right human having how many number of chromosome and their somatic cell somatic cell mean body cell so that contain 46 number of chromosome and that is deployed number deployed mean number means double set of chromosome okay so in this 46 chromosome you know like chromosome one i get from father chromosome one i get from mother chromosome two i get from mother chromosome two i get from father chromosome three i get from mother chromosome uh three i get from father so up to where it will reach it will reach up to 23 you got it so it means in my body there is 23 pairs of chromosome so if it is 23 pairs of chromosome so it means i have 46 number of chromosome i have 46 number of chromosome now chromosome one let's suppose this is chromosome one right let's suppose this is chromosome one okay so in my body or in my somatic cell i have chromosome one and i have chromosome one this from father i get in the, the one and the another one i got from mother right now these two chromosome are similar structurally they are similar for example the position of a specific gene this is a place where a specific gene that control character X. So that gene here present, that gene, like that version of that should, of that gene, that gene should be also present here, right? So it means that chromosome that are structurally similar, that are functionally similar, that are homologous chromosome. That are what? Homologous? chromosome is it clear in each pair one chromosome has been inherited from mother and the other inherited from father and both chromosomes are called what these are called homologous chromosome chromosome one and chromosome one homologous chromosome two and chromosome two are homologous right because they are structurally and, uh, and functionally similar you can see here these bands you can see here these ba this band is similar with this. The, uh, these bands represent two genes. So it means these two genes, these two genes, but these are different version of genes, right? It's, it's a single gene, but different version, different copy of that gene, like one gene and another. These, these two control a specific character. Okay. 
but both may be similar or both may be a version of a specific gene and that version of specific gene is called allele i will clear you now okay so the position of this specific gene is similar in this the position of this is similar this is similar so right so these two are what homologous chromosome is it clear i think it is clear now all right now let's move more toward another okay so what are homologous chromosome homologous chromosome i discussed with you already that uh, you know like uh, you can see here uh, this is 2n number of chromosome 2n number of chromosome means 46 number of chromosome but why you see this 2n 2 is like this and n is you know n is the number of chromosome so how many chromosome we have we have 23 so i will put it here 23 right but this is in pair right so for the pair i will put it here too so it will give me 46 so this 46 number of chromosome will replicate right it will replicate for example it is chromosome one and this is uh, chromosome two right so this chromosome one replicate when it replicate so it is still one chromosome but they having uh, means like two chrom one chromated another this having this part and this is another part right it's called chromated and both are joined by centromere and but still it is one chromosome remember and same like this but only dna replicate because of that both uh, both chromated are joined with each other by centromere but this is chromosome two and this is chromosome one a means that in this cell there are two chromosomes now but when the process of mitosis started so what will happen and that process the centromere will split right and this centromere will split now this cytokinesis starts cytokinesis means the cell will divide when the cell divide so this chromatid will go like now it is individual chromosome that will go to one cell and that will go to another cell this will go to one cell and that will go to another cell so you get two cell so you get two cell but you get two cell you get two cell but both having both having two number uh, of chromosome you can see here this one and two one and two so it means that these are these two cells are similar with this one now because of mitosis is it clear and these two chromosome i told you this chromosome for example i quote for this chromosome two and chromosome two okay is it clear and chromosome one and chromosome one. those are similar i think it is clear right now okay are any confusion you can ask It's clear to all? Okay. It means it, it's clear, right? Now, body cell having the applied number of chromosome and sex cell having applied number of chromosome. Applied number of chromosome means n number of chromosome. Okay. Now, let's move to world. Okay, so this is just a significance of mitosis. I discussed with you like mitosis help in growth, it help in repair, it help in cloning like a new organism form. It was one of the experimental animal that they make a dolly shape right by the by the process of mitosis. They did it, but we will not go to in detail. But just keep it in your mind that cloning is the process through which you produce a new identical organism. Okay. And you know, uh, another advantage of mitosis is, is asexual reproduction, like budding, right? You know, potato budding and tuber, yeah, potato tuber budding happen, and yeast, a small bud come out from the yeast, and then that both uh, separate from each other and two new yeast uh, cell give you, right? So, this are uh, and all these processes what happened asexual reproduction in asexual reproduction what happened mitosis right so cutting bulb tuber are runner plants right 
all this we discuss it in detail like in strawberry potato tulip willow and all these plants what happen asexual reproduction in asexual reproduction uh, and asexual reproduction process of okay now uh, you can see it here this is the difference between mitosis and meiosis in mitosis you can see uh, initially in this cell we have four number of chromosome now here also four number of chromosome but chromosome is here is in the form a replicative form if it is in replicative form centromere will split for, for example from this chromosome two will form from this two will form from this two will form from this two will form so uh, now they will become eight so out of eight four will go to one cell and four will go to another cell right so you will get new cell and again that two cell having similar number with that uh, original one so this is the process of mitosis while in meiosis what is happening we have uh, how many number of chromosome four number of chromosome right now this four number of chromosome will replicate but what will happen at that two in meiosis first meiosis consists of two stages one is meiosis first right another is meiosis second one is meiosis first another is meiosis second right so in meiosis first what will happen the chromosome for example they still having four number of chromosome so that four number of chromosome two will go to one cell and two will go to another cell you got it and then that two cell now the chromosome in, in the form of replicated it means it is replicate your form of chromosome right so the centromere will split up this chromosome so this chromosome will become two and the centromere of, of this chromosome will split and this will become two right so two chromosome one from this chromosome and one from this they will go to this cell and one from this and one from this that will go to another cell so you get two cell here two number of chromosome you get two cell here two number of chromosome and same process will happen here so you will get two here and you will go to here so it means if the process of meiosis happen so one cell will convert into four so four here convert into how many you get four cell right from one like four number of chromosome containing cell it give you four cell and each cell contain 22 uh, sorry each cell contain two two number of chromosome it means diploid convert into haploid so this process happen in our body so in that 46 number of chromosome convert into what 23 so it means in the process of meiosis diploid convert into haploid right so i want to tell you like that if, if this process happen in male testis so 46 will convert into 23 and that will form four sperm while if it is happening in female ovary so that 46 number containing chromosome uh, chromosome containing cell that will convert into how many 23 number contain a uh, chromosome containing cell that cell will be also how many four so it means four who are formed from one meiosis and female and four sperm form from one mitosis and male right now it depends for example any sperm and any ova uh, come and they combine with they fuse with each other that process is fertilization and again you will get 46 number of chromosome i think it is clear right now let's move toward another okay so this is the difference between meiosis and mitosis so mitosis produce two dieter cell while meiosis produce two uh, four gamete cells Daughter cells are diploid and meiosis daughter cells are haploid. Daughter cells are genetically identical in mitosis, while in meiosis, gametes are different to each other. Right? Here they are like, you know, here if you see toward the female uh, and male, right? So in male, in sperm, one sperm may be X, another may be Y, right? So like that it is forming. So that's why we use the word here, gametes are different to each other and also they may be different to each other because the process of crossing over happen in meiosis right daughter cells are genetically identical to the parent cell and mitosis no crossing over happen you should be clear about crossing over i will tell you now and gametes are different to the parents why this is different to the parents 
because the process of pressing over happen. You know, when the process of meiosis is happening, remember, remember it. Uh, so for example, this is one chromosome one, right? And this is chromosome one also. Both are homologous chromosome, right? So if the process of meiosis happen in it, so what will happen? One chromosome one will go to one gametes. Are you getting me? And another chromosome one will go to another gamete, right or no? So it means to convert the two chromosome now convert it to one. So now when they are dividing at that time and the meiosis, okay, and pro lead propase, it is the stage of meiosis. And that the this chromosome, this chromosome will come near to each other and they will exchange their part, right? It means that in some places they will come near and some gene will go, like they will exchange their DNA. One part of DNA will come here, one other part will come here. So in some, some places they will exchange their DNA. And because of that exchange, the variation will come in organism. These two chromosomes, because of the exchange, so these are not 100% similar with this original chromosome. Why? Because the chromosome came near to each other and they exchange their parts. And when they exchange their part, so that lead to genetic variability. And that is the reason that offspring are different from the parents, which is not 100% similar. Why? Because during gametes formation, a process happen in which two chromosome, two homologous chromosome, homologous chromosome come near to each other and they exchange their parts. Okay, and when they exchange their part, it means they exchange the DNA fragment. And as a result of that, new like new gene produce. New gene means like not completely gene but little bit variation come in the gene, okay? And this process is called crossing over. Is it clear? Hope it is clear to all. All right, now, Okay, now mitosis is one stage process, right? While meiosis is two stage process. So what does it mean? Mitosis is one stage process because only 46, where 46 chromosome containing cell, that will, convert, that will give you two cell, right? 46 and 46. While meiosis is two stage process. Why? Because the two stage will happen. Meiosis one and meiosis second. Meiosis one, 46, will convert into 23 and 23, right? Two cell will form. And then in that two cell, that 23 chromosome containing cell, again that will do process of meiosis two, and that will give you four cell. So I discussed with you already, meiosis consists of two stages, meiosis one and meiosis second, right? All right. Okay, it, mitosis happen everywhere in the body. Like you mean, everywhere means it's farm or body cells, at bird or somatic cell. But only meiosis happen in reproductive organ and testis and ovary because there is a specialized cell. There is specialized stem cell that's having the ability to produce farm and ovum. Is it clear? Okay, now, Come toward genes are on chromosome. Now, up to here, I've learned about a little bit about meiosis, mitosis, and all these things. A little bit about the chromosome. But question is, what is gene? Right? You know, like, uh, for example, it is a cell, right? And this cell there is nucleus, right? And the nucleus contains DNA, right? I will do here to you like this. Uh, let's see, for example, it is a cell, right? 
this cell can is contain nucleus and this nucleus is, is a very thin network of you know thin network that is called chromatin network this is called what chromatin network that network during cell division it will convert into thread like structure like this structure and that thread like structure is actually what chromosome like this one is a chromosome right and this chromosome is the combination of protein plus dna so let's suppose i have this chromosome let's suppose this is a chromosome right this is chromosome this part of chromosome is called chromatid and this part of chromosome is called chromatid and it is joined by centrome right now this is a dna in the chromosome right in this form this is dna right all right so at this dna is supported by a special protein i will it's not the part of your syllabus but by the way i will just tell you the name of that that protein is called histone protein so it means the dna is coiled around histone protein to give support this, to this dna right to give stability to this dna why you know that dna having negative charge and that histone protein having positive charge so they attract each other second thing when you coil something for example you have ball right and you want to coil a thread around that so that thread will take less space so for that reason it is coiled around special protein so we can call like this chromosome is actually the combination of dna and protein while each part of this dna code for specific protein each fragment of this dna code for specific sorry yeah for specific protein and that fragment of dna is called gene so let me tell you once again what is gene gene is actually the fragment of dna a specific fragment of dna that code for specific protein for example this fragment of dna code for x protein this code this fragment of dna code for y protein so it means this is gene x this is gene y so gene is clear to us now gene is actually a fragment of dna that code for specific protein gene is actually the sick nucleotide specific nucleotide sequence of dna that code for specific protein why i use the word nucleotide because nucleotide is the basic unit of dna right adenine thymine guanine cytosine right or no so that nucleotide form a specific sequence for example i take this sequence here and i write to you here a c c t g right so this specific sequence this specific sequence code for x protein so i can say like this a specific fragment of dna code for a specific protein or a specific sequence of nucleotide that code for a specific protein that is called gene i think the definition of gene is clear right now all right okay now you can see here from this example you can learn very easy you know like uh, the dna letters means the basic unit of dna is what nucleotide and we have four type of nucleotide and dna adenine cytosine thymine and guanine right so it is just like letters right while several letters form like word here group of three letter group of three letter is called what you should you should use your mind here what does it mean codon you remember codon for example i have a c g right or no so this a c g is called codon and specific codon code for a specific amino acid so let's suppose at this time a c g code for x amino acid i am hearing using my word 
I am using X amino acid. And here is another codon C C G. So that code for what? That code for Y amino acid, right? So it means, for example, we have a long strand of DNA, uh, and that DNA, this part is gene. For example, this part is gene. So in this gene, we have what? Remember, we have in this gene all the nucleotide is in triplet form. A eh? triplet, eh? three, three, three. All the I'm talking about this pigment, this gene, this gene. So these nucleotide is in codon three, 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 like A U G. CCG, TTG, CCC, TTT, GGG, like that, right? Triplet. So it means that code for X amino acid, that code for Y amino acid, that code for Z amino acid, that code for A amino acid, right? So all these three, all these amino acids will join together by peptide linkage and they will form for you what? They will form protein. Now it is a protein, right? So this now uh, it means that gene consists of nucleotide and nucleotide are in the form of triplet that code for specific, uh, specific amino acid, right? Like that, you can see here, group of three letters, codon. So several codon come together form genes. So it is just like that several chapters in your book, right? And several genes combine and they will form a book. So what is the name of that book in biology? Please tell me. <clears throat> Please tell me. What do you think? Several genes combine, they form a book. What is that book in biology? Very good. Very nice. Clear. Correct. Chromosome, right? And several chromosome form a library, and it is your nucleus. Is it clear? <clears throat> All right. Now you can see here uh, there are twenty-three pairs of chromosome. Right? How many pairs of chromosome? Twenty-three. It means that we have forty-six number of chromosome. Now, uh, the attention here. So if you can see here, this is chromosome one, one and one, two and two, three and three, four and four. So up to 22. These chromosome, these chromosome, these 22 pairs of chromosome are called autosomal chromosome. It control our body character. Remember, while the last pair, it is 23 pair, means 23 number pair. This pair and girls are in female it is similar means that's why we represent it by xx while in male these the last 23 pair it is not similar one chromosome is x just like it, it means it is x and more in length while this having small another chromosome called what y chromosome so in male in male, the 23 pair chromosome the, that are not homologous, that are not similar. So we call that XY, we represent it with, by XY. And in female, we represent it by XX. Now these two chromosomes are responsible to control our sex character. But remember, it is not like this that it only control our sex character. There is some body character they can also control. But the exact function of this X and Y chromosome is to control the six of an organism. That's why they are called six chromosomes. While the remaining 22, they are called what? Autosomal chromosome. It controls our body character. Is it clear? All right. So here, you know, like one gene code for one specific protein. Remember the conversion of, first of all, what is happening with you? First of all, 
For example, it is a sequence of DNA, right? From that DNA, what will form? Tell me. Uh, for example, I want that from this DNA, it sh protein should be formed, right? So this DNA will convert into what? It will convert into messenger RNA. And that messenger RNA will go to bypassing through nuclear core and that will go to the cytoplasm and the cytoplasm with the help of ribosome, you know, ribosome is cell organelle that are forming protein, right? So with the help of ribosome, that will convert into protein, right? So remember the conversion of this DNA into messenger RNA. So that process is called what? Please be with me. The conversion of this DNA into messenger RNA. So what is this process? Please. Anyone can give me reply, please. The conversion of DNA into messenger RNA and the nucleus of eukaryotic cell. What is that process? Very good, Siba. Very nice. Transcription, Zoha, correct, very nice. Okay, yes, very good, very good. Nabil, Muhammad, Ali, Noor, transcription, very good. So the conversion of DNA into messenger RNA, it is transcription. While the conversion of messenger RNA into protein, that is called what? Translation, that is called translation, very good. Up to here, I think it is clear, very nice. Okay. So here I discussed with you, gen are written and DNA code, right? The code can be translated into amino acid. Amino acid are linked together to form protein. I told you the bond between two amino acid is called peptide linkage. Okay. So this one you can see here, these are with us the codon that I discussed with you, for example, G, C, C. This code for this amino acid X right and c c c this code for amino acid y right and t g c right so this code for amino acid z right or no this is codon triplet nucleotide sequence that code for specific amino acid is called codon now these amino acid x y and z well form protein is it clear you can see here now. Genes don't actually make protein. They just contain the instruction on how to make them. They just make, they give instruction on which sequence it's supposed to be found. Right? The gene is actually, uh, that is just a code that you code on what should be the arrangement of uh, protein formation. Like in this one, give us this code. You can see here, uh, this give us a code that like here should be this amino acid, here should be this, and here should be this, and here should be this amino acid. But let's suppose if some problem came here and instead of this amino acid, and instead of this nucleotide, another nucleotide, for example, T came, so it may not, then it will not get this fruit, this amino acid. And when it's not the, make this amino acid, Right, so it may code for another amino acid or it may code for nothing. That process is called what? Mutation. That process is called what? Mutation. Change in the normal sequence of DNA is called what? Mutation. Is it clear? DNA stay in the nucleus, but protein built in cell cytoplasm. It is clear because I know that Translation happen in cytoplasm while transcription happen in the nucleus of a cell. Okay. So DNA is a double uh, stranded structure that is linked to each other by hydrogen bond, right? These are hydrogen bond. By this combination, you know, like remember, there is three types of nucleotide, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Adenine will always form bond with a thymine and cytosine will form bond with guanine. Remember that it bonds between, this bond is actually hydrogen bond, right? This actually represents this hydrogen bond. So the A will form double hydrogen bond with T, A will form what? Double hydrogen bond with T and G will form triple hydrogen bond with C. G will form what bond? 
triple hydrogen bond with C. So it means that DNA that having more GNC content that is more stable DNA. Is it clear? So let me cover about what is allele. Okay, be careful here. Allele is actually alternate form of a gene. Now, what does alternate form of gene means? Alternate form of gene means a version of specific gene is called allele. So let's suppose, let's suppose if I have this chromosome, right? And this is another chromosome. Is it clear? Both are homologous chromosome, remember. Here is one gene, okay? And here is the another gene, and both genes are what? Similar. Both genes are similar. This both gene code for your height, for example, tall. You are tall, right? So for which character it code? This gene code for tall. Tall is physical appearance that I can see. So that is called what? Phenotype. Phenotype, the physical appearance, the observable feature that you can see. It is tall. Phenotype. Now, for this, here is this gene, this gene sequence I represent by T. And this gene sequence I represent by T. Right? Now, the sequence of this gene, I will represent you here like C, G, P, T, G, C. This is the sequence of this tall. Okay? This is the sequence of this tall. Okay, and an individual, this is chromosome one and this is chromosome one. There is two chromosome and your somatic cell. So that will express and your height will be, you, you will be tall. But what happens, sometimes a little mutation, a little bit mutation are changed in this sequence come, in this original sequence of tall. And this convert into, be with me very carefully, please listen to me. C, G, C, T, okay and G and C. Is it clear? If you see here, both sequences are similar. It seems to you similar, but, but very less difference is here. You can see here is T and here is C. A very little bit different. This still code for your height. That's still code for your height, but you will be dwarf. Dwar means short. Right? So still this, so you know, a new a version of gene arise, a new version of specific gene arise, and that new version are this, that new alternative form of gene is called what? Elite. So let's suppose a person in offspring get from mother T, okay, and from father he get small T. So what should be the act? you means like this is now t and small t so this condition is called heterozygous because there is a specific gene having two versions for the specific gene is gene there is two alternate to form so this condition is called heterozygous but in this case this big t means that this t will express and that person will be tall if this person is tall so be with me, okay? So if this person is tall, it means this gene suppress the expression of small t and small t is not a, a, a expressing in the presence of this allele. So this allele is called dominant allele. This allele is called dominant allele that are suppressing the small t, okay? Now, this allele can be expressed, but for example, one individual get T from mother, small T, and he gets small T from father. So that person will be lead to dwarf. Now this condition is homozygous. Homozygous means similar allele of specific gene. Both are similar, but both are not dominant. So we call it homozygous recessive, and this person will be dwarf. Okay? You got it? Dwarf. While this person, if you see here, this was homozygous dominant. This was homozygous dominant. Right? Now, you can see 
like I can see a person is dwarf. I can see a person is tall. I can see a person's skin color is white, black, brown, hair color. I can see all that. But I cannot see my gene sequence. I cannot see my DNA. Now, that character that I can see, that is called phenotype. While the character that is on your DNA, so this, like this gene. So this is called genotype. A genotype usually we express in the, the, by this uh, English letter, alphabet letter. Okay, is it clear? So like, for example, I tell you T and T, it represents you tall. So in this example, T and T is my genotype. It is my genotype, while tall is my phenotype. T and small t, again, it will give you what? Again, it will give you tall, right? So here, this is my genotype, and here it is my phenotype. Another example, small t and small t, this is homozygous recessive condition. So here, it will give me what? Dwarf. So remember, small t and small t is what? Genotype, and dwarf is my phenotype, which I can see. I think it is clear. I think LL is clear. Okay. Uh, you can see here, like, uh, you know, in this individual, uh, it is a heterozygous condition. You know, the blue allele for the blue eye color, it is recessive, and the brown allele for brown eye color, it is dominant, right? So, individual A here is the condition is heterozygous, right? Why? Because blue and brown, right or no? So, blue and brown, but which one is dominant? which brown is dominant. So for this, this person should be eye color brown. Here, this, yeah. So here brown and brown, this is homozygous condition. So for this person also the eye color should be brown. But here, if you see, here is blue and blue. So it is homozygous recessive. For this person, the eye color should be, um, should be blue. So because of that, different alleles, so different organisms doing different phenotype. You can see here, these are because of uh, it is give rise to variation, right? These are the example like different allele, different alleles each person have. For so far that your eye color is different, your skin color is different. H hacker tom, you know, like some people having tom that can that are too much flexible. The tom it's too much flexible. It can uh, become curved, right? So this is also one of the example ruling up tongue. Most of the people can rule the tongue. Some people cannot rule their tongue. Ear loop, you can see here. Uh, this is ear loop. Some people having free. Mostly it's free, but some people are like it's joined with that. You can check yours and you can see who is like such appearance, right? So all these are because of different combinations of elites. Elites give rise to range of different inherited character in a population. Even blood group, some having blood group O, some having B, some having C, like that, right? Okay, so here it is just example. You can see here dominant and recessive allele. I discussed with you a gene allele that express over another allele and homozygous and heterozygous condition, right? And both condition that express, you can see here the brown B is dominant over small B. So that's why in the example, see the brown A hide the expression of uh, recessio one blue, right? And recessio only express in uh, homozygous condition. You can see this will express now in this. Yeah, the small b express it here, right? This, this is the phenotype of that. That this is the genotype, right? And now I can see here, this is the phenotype. It's the physical appearance of an organism. Of, and this is the definition of homozygous and heterozygous. You can study from here. Loci, remember, loci is the position or the location of gene where on the chromosome where the gene are present. Okay. Heterozygous is dissimilar allele, while homozygous identical allele. So this condition is heterozygous, homozygous, homozygous. 
homozygous dominant, homozygous disease. I think it is clear. So I will stop my lecture here. You can also check this example. Both alleles are dominant. Code for that. Both alleles are recessive. Code for blue. The two alleles are different. So it code for brown because this brown allele is dominant over small. I think I should. Uh, uh, I think up to here it is clear to all. Right. If anyone having a question, they can ask.